Welcome back to stage two of my third Gladiator SCX-24 build. So if you remember in stage one, we left off with a fully built chassis without electronics and uh, we got wheels and tires on there and this is what you're looking at basically. You still have the stock colored body on there and I've uh, got the roof rack just test fit that I'm going to use on this. So I've been kind of at a roadblock on this build and uh, some of it is due to the wheels I had on there. Uh, no fault of the wheels. I absolutely love those WT Micro wheels, the black and tan that I had on there. Problem was they were really making me focus on tan and feeling like I was locked into that paint scheme or having some tan in it. So I had some other ideas for the, the paint that I wanted to do. So I ended up swapping out uh, to some other wheels. So I've got some bronze WT Micro Ray wheels on here. So these are a little uh, narrower than what I had on there, but not by much, maybe like three millimeter narrower, about the same offset, but they just don't stick out as far because they're, they're not as wide. So, uh, this body's just kind of flopped on there. So I'm liking that. And the other reason that I did that was ever since I got those black and tan wheels, this green Jeep has been screaming for them for alternates. So a little while back, I put this club five, tan rooftop tin on here which is just super nice and ever since then it was screaming for these black and tan wheels so i've got these on the bigger bogger uh, rc four wheel drive tires and some full foams on there uh, crawl innovation foams but i just think that's a match made in heaven so i feel like that was a good choice to pull those over i can always potentially run them on this as well um, but uh, the other thing you can see here is the rear end is kind of Carolina squatted. So that's because I've already started uh, tuning this. So I've got a rubber band limiter strap in. You can see I put a screw in, a little plastic washer. So that basically keeps my axle from dropping out on a descent. Gives me a nice center pivot. So it holds the shocks just like there was no flex blades. But I can still articulate and pull those flex blades down to, to full extension but it just doesn't let this axle drop or the body basically pick up on a descent. So that's a nice little bit of tuning. So I'm going to do the same basic idea to the front and that will pull this down as well. So that should even that out, but I was delaying that because if you remember from last time we had the toe in kind of issue here on the front. So I got some adjustable steering links from Injora. They've got the threaded rod in. So can adjust those to get a little bit of toe out potentially or at least straighten these up and the other item that i mentioned was potentially these stainless steel drive shafts with the actual d hole so you know i ended up ordering these obviously got them in and they're super blingy um, and i'm kind of not wanting to throw them on here uh, the other reason is that little guy transmission still had a little slop in it even with those plastic drive shafts so then i feel like i don't want to put metal weight back on there i feel like i'll get more of that off center uh rotation you know just it'll just exacerbate it with the weight and the the ultimate reason is my third gladiator build this guy so i'm running out of space with all these gladiators so this guy is screaming for some bling and look at that it could really really benefit from some bright stainless drive shafts. So I think I'm going to install these guys onto this build and have a uh, fully blinged out underside on that guy. So a little bit of upgrades here for uh, the fat boy and we've already kind of done the tire alternate upgrade on uh, trailing there. So anyways, I think it's time to jump in and get something going here. Okay, I figure before we jump into the surgery here on the blue one, take a look at these uh, new Endura drive shafts here. So, like I said before, they've got an actual D-hole for a nice tight fit to the stock output. And then, looks like these are full length extension. Yeah, they are, so that's nice. Nice spline all the way around those. It feels really smooth, got a little bit of weight to them. So I think that's gonna be, uh, a nice little addition. So let me get those on. Let's see what they look like. All right. Take a quick look at how those turned out. 
And I think that was the finishing touch that this needed on the underside. So then it's looking super clean. Those things uh, were precision fit, no problems. Slid right on there. So I don't think there's gonna be any issues with those. So I think now maybe it's time to actually move on to the real build. All right, a little bit of progress here, sitting nice and low. And more importantly, gonna be driving straight. So you can see if I square up this side, there's just a little bit of toe out on this side. So if I square that up the same, exactly what I want. So you can see with that link, a little bit of gap on each side to get that to spread. So that's perfect. Really nice to have that little bit of adjustability. And then on the limiting strap, ended up coming up over this carbon fiber piece with my rubber band. I couldn't get enough tension on that low crossbar or I would have had to double up this rubber band while installing it, which is kind of tricky to do. Um, the way I install it here on the bottom is I basically run those screws head to head for the upper links. And as I'm screwing it in, I slip the rubber band across there. And so it's basically on a rod now. And uh, to do that, you usually have to use a longer piece of hardware on one side. So you can see there, I've got a washer um, to give me kind of the exact little bit of spacing there. So these end up tightening down, um, butting head to head. But super easy way to get a spot to loop there that's kind of a central pivot. And then that just comes right up. So you can see I'm almost at full droop here, a little bit of shock, travel left, but that's going to prevent the body from kicking back on an ascent. It's not going to affect any articulation because I've got that central pivot, but it'll keep it tucked nice and low. So let's see what this looks like with the body kind of mocked on here. So that already looks better, sitting nice and low. So I think that's basically got the chassis set up. I need to get the drive shaft back in there for the front. But uh, I think the next thing is looking at uh, getting the bumper on here. And uh, we're going to do something a little bit different for that. But I think that's going to be key to starting on uh, trimming up the body, getting that fitted. Time for the front bumper. So you can see here I've got it mocked up. And this is uh, just an all black metal AliExpress special. The challenge for me was finding a front bumper that I haven't used and that I liked and there aren't too many left out there. So this one uh, is pretty nice. It's similar to the gray Coda Racing one that I've got on my blue Gladiator, but a little different. Um, it's got the faux fair lead so I can create a faux winch. It's got D-rings and it's got uh, these deep uh, light pods. The one negative to it is it only has one set of mounting positions. So most bumpers have three at least. So you can move it in and out. So I've got it lined up, but it fits in very snugly to the bracket. So hopefully I can just run it pushed all the way in nice and tucked like that. But it does suffer from the one thing that all Gladiators and JLUs have in common, the drop down brackets that lower the bumper and create that big gap to the bottom of the grill. And it's really not needed. Um, with a little trim to the grill or just barely raising that nose of the body, you can avoid having to drop it. So it's something that I've dealt with on a lot of builds and it's always kind of a challenge. Um, so I think I've got a nice new product here that I've, really is a godsend for me to help uh, solve this problem. Um, the other thing I've got out here is uh, some Majora D-rings to kind of dress this guy up. but. Uh, now that we've looked at the bumper, let's take a look at how I want to mount this thing. Okay, I've got these bumper mounts out on the table, so I've got two seller's options here. So on the right, adaptive design, so I've purchased from before, does 3D printed uh, items for the micro crawlers. And then these two options are from the same seller, I believe it's Rogue Gorilla on Etsy, but uh, he sells them uh, together. So that's nice, you get both options, you actually get two of each. So I got two sets, so I've got quite a few spares of that version. But uh, take a close look, so you can see these mount from the outside of the frame. So I'm not going to be able to run that type because I've got the fenders installed and that screw there. So that's where they would install typically, but the frame is not exposed. We've got a flat surface, so not going to be able to run that type. 
But luckily this seller offers both types. So the type on the right mount to the outside of the frame and these to the left, they have the peg, they mount to the inside as typical, but just come straight out. So versus these that you see here that actually drop that cross member down, we're gonna replace those. So we'll pull that bumper up in essence. So I've got the frame rail out here. So I'm gonna test fit these and I'll show you just kind of how those size up and fit. I've got the stock drop down bracket there and you can see I've got my three options and these two are definitely the uh, closest to kind of stock as far as the shape and the size. So I've got a frame rail here, so let's just uh, get these fitted on here real quick. So this just pegs in, this is the inside mount. So this pegs in as typical, um, nice fit. But because it's an inside mount, it's gonna affect servo clearance. And as you can see in the first stage, I've already kind of clearanced this out. So I'm likely gonna have to do the same thing here, but not a big deal. So ultimately, if I wasn't running inner fenders, I would choose this option here. So this goes from the outside of the frame. It, it has a peg as well. And that's a nice flush fit there. Just extends it right on out there where you want it. And then this one from Adaptive Designs, in essence, does the same exact thing. It's just, uh, in my opinion, just a rougher, rougher looking print. Not that it's horrible. Um, and bulkier, but definitely gets the job done nonetheless. But uh, both of these options are just wonderful for people that build JLUs or Gladiators, and I believe maybe the Bronco has something similar to that as well. But uh, I'm going to get this one swapped on to the bracket, get that back on the truck, see what this thing looks like. Oh man, that looks really good. Look at that. It probably lifted the body maybe a millimeter. Can't even tell if I didn't say anything. And what's nice is the uh, grill tucks right behind the bumper. The bumper's pushed all the way in. So the body grill edge can actually rest down on the uh, bumper posts. So don't really even have to trim too much off of that, but that's what it looks like. Just coming out straight right there. So super good looking bumper here. And the, the biggest thing about doing that is getting it up, tucking it in is right here. So now I fully clear that tire edge at full compression, full lock. So before I was all into that bumper in the position that it was in. So nice added benefit there. The shackles uh, look great on there. So we'll come back to this bumper when we get to lighting and uh, get that winch in as well. But I think for now, we're done with it. Well, I've got the clear body out, so you know it's about to get real. Since we got that front bumper fit to the chassis, I figured let's move to the rear and focus on getting this Club 5 3D printed bumper mounted up to the clear body. So let's take a quick look at this actual bumper. This is really nice uh, stock, I guess, looking bumper. So it's got your two recovery points. Looks like a trailer plug-in, your plate frame, two light pods, and then uh, some diamond tread on top. And of course it wraps around for protection on the sides. So really good looking uh, lightweight bumper. So the light pods are the issue we're gonna deal with since this gladiator is obviously not set up for any lighting on the rear. And this comes with a nice printed little uh, template here. So you can tape that on from the outside of a stock body. Since this is clear, I can actually tape it from the backside and then use a reamer and pop those light holes. So pretty simple there. It comes with two red lights and actually comes with a splitter and some hardware. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed and we'll see what it looks like. Rear bumper mock-up complete. And wow, this thing looks even better than I thought it would really scale liking that wrap around. So for the body trim, I did have to take a little off of the sides for this wrap around. And then as far as the light pods, rather than holes, they ended up being more of a U shape because they were so close to the bottom edge, but it makes this bumper easy to just drop those in and uh, mount it. And then along the bottom, you can see I trimmed some of that Lexan to follow the bumper profile, just to not have any of it hanging down below this bottom edge. But man, that looks really good, super scale, 
very happy with it. I think it'll look much better when the body's painted. But uh, speaking of super scale, I've got some more Club 5 to address these rear lights. So let's get into that. Quick look at these Club 5 rear gladiator tail lights. So you get your red lenses and you get a two part housing for each side, a back box and then an outer kind of trim piece. So these are made for any SCX24 gladiator. So most of those would be stock and pre painted. And you can see here the lenses have a peg. My assumption is you would pop a hole in the body to mount these and the LED would illuminate the peg and then the lens. So I will have the option to tape off more of that lens and leave it clear. So I'm going to cut these apart, kind of mock them up and just see what it entails to mount these, how they work, and uh, we'll know more. Okay, I've got this one tail light mocked up and uh, it looks really nice. Very scale, nice fitment. So you just pop one hole through the body for that peg. That's pushed in all the way and you can see it doesn't cover the whole stock tail light body. So it won't matter to me since I'm painting this one, but very easy. Looks like I've got it aligned pretty well across the back. So they do provide a little micro mini super mini mini screw here that you're supposed to screw in from the inside through the back bucket once the body's painted, which to me that's impossible. So most likely I'll be using shoe goo to uh, get all of this stuff attached when that time comes. But for now, I'm gonna pop another hole over here and we'll move on. Quick update here on the fitment. So in getting that other one on the opposite side, I was able to uh, fit it a little bit better and I came back to this one, opened up the hole. So I've got a little more adjustment up and down and I'm getting much better coverage here across the side, back to the back of the lens. So much better fitment than initial. I think I had it uh, pinched a little so it just wouldn't it wouldn't seat fully so now I'm liking that much better much happier with these and then I've got a little bit of up and down play on both sides to get them exactly where I want them when I finally get them set so that'll work out well in the end I think so I think we are done with the rear tail light fitment all right I've got the final piece of kit fit on the truck so this is the Rock Wolf Designs XO cage rack. So you can see they're super clean, two little screw holes right at the little dimples on both sides. So on test fitting this, I ended up punching the holes just slightly behind the two dimples, but basically on center of them. And that uh, basically kept this mount point off of the hood which it would be in real life. It would sit behind that hood so it could still open. And uh, this looks nice and level across the roof, nice and square across the roof on the front. So that all looks just incredible to be made by hand. And I know he made several of these, probably eight or 10 of these. So he used to be a welder and I'm sure he made up a little mini jig or something, but just insanely precise work here just excellent and man this thing feels really sturdy these little styrene welds i'm not sure what he uses for his slurry uh, to make these connections but they feel really good just can't say enough about this almost like something you would buy off of the shelf but uh, anyways i think now we are at the stage we can remove all this stuff and start trimming up the body to fit those wheels and move towards paint.
Whew, that was some work. So I figured let's take a little break, check in and actually look at what we've done so far. So first thing you saw was trimming up the body. I flip flopped back to the tan wheels. So that was for a couple of reasons, but one of those being that I just couldn't get the tan out of my mind after having that stock body sit on the chassis so long. So I incorporated this gray that I planned on using into the scheme and I kind of went with this mask look around the uh, windshield with a full surround. So I brought this down as well and then looking at the lines on the Jeep, I just followed this door line as well and thinking if this top was removable, you know, of course it's not, you'd have this cool stripe kicking up and around the bed. So I think that looks really good. And then of course I hit it with some flat clear to knock this roof down and make it look like fiberglass, make this look like a matte black vinyl. These look like rubber and this look like bed liner. So that just really adds the final little touch there. And then the stickers came out really nice. I trimmed those up really close to get rid of any of the clear kind of overslop. And then for the actual windows, I used the JLU window sticker surrounds that you actually don't use on the JLU. So I trimmed out the outer edges. And since the Gladiator is a little bit oversized from the JLU, those work out perfect as the window trim. And so there's no sticker over the Lexan. So that's why those look so nice and clear. Great little trick if you've got those uh, left over from a JLU. And then for the rear details, you saw just painted these up. A little bit of effort there, goes a long way. Hit these with a flat coat to take out any of that toy shine. So those look really good. And then the jewel back here is probably these tail lights. So I opened up the Lexan on each side to hopefully get a little more light shining through and for this side marker lens. And then you saw I had to uh, actually double side the back buckets because that screw for the rack is hidden. So if you ever want to remove the rack, you're going to have to take these off. So I didn't shoe glue those. The front were shoe glued and again had to cut those apart to stretch them because of the width of the Gladiator is just a hair wider than the JLU. And uh, you know, the Shapeways handles as always, the CC hand mirrors as always. And I went ahead and did some safety tape here just because I didn't want to have any bleed through on the paint, although I don't think I would have with this paint color combo, but just to be on the safe side, I glued the magnets to some tape under there. But I think that pretty much does it for the body minus the actual Rock Wolf rack getting installed. So I think next, so let's take a look at the chassis, a few tweaks I've made there, and then actually get some electronics installed into the chassis. All right, let's take a quick look at the chassis side of things here. And you can see right off the bat, the nice little uh, mofo motor mount coming up there through the interior. Of course, this interior is probably going to sit up just a little higher, but it still needed a little bit of clearance for that to happen. But I think that's going to work out fine. Of course, just loving the tan seats. I think that's going to pop really nice, especially through the clear windows. So setting that aside, let's take a look here at the front. So you saw the winch got installed the faux winch but uh, pretty easy to do just wrap a uh, skewer with this braided line secure that in and then uh, snake through just a little more braided line and this is a jewelry hook that i snipped a little little bit off of and uh, just glued that in to the spool so nice nice little touch there to fill out that bumper fair lead and then you saw i had to clearance the fenders for those light buckets but that's pretty typical as well i had to do that on my green jail u with the flubbers fenders and then uh, when i had these off kind of the frame apart i popped in another skinny brace i think that was from another kit and uh, i positioned this one in the horizontal or the flat position i initially had this larger tray on the slope but thinking I'm going to run a 2S stock battery, I wanted the length of that to run this way and not angled up. And also thought I could potentially slip a small component, maybe the BEC, on this little thin cross brace under that battery. So went ahead and got that in there, got the battery strap in. So I think we are set up for electronics and we're going to have plenty of space on the sliders 
even though I did trim off these uh, leading corners for tire clearance, but I don't think that's going to hurt us on uh, space. There's so much space on each side, but I think that's the next thing. Let's get out the electronics and take a look at those components and uh, what we're going to do for lighting. So let's run through these electronics and lights very quickly. Did some of this in stage one, but it has been a while, so we'll go through it again. So for the ESC, I'm gonna be using this 2S or 3S capable Lizard Pro with the Bluetooth dongle, and that has a five volt or six and a half volt selectable BEC, but specifically on their website, Fury's Tech states, you cannot use 3S with the BAM 4100 motor or any high KV motor. So we're gonna be running a stock 2S battery, which will give a little more runtime at 350 mAh, and uh, should be just fine with that KV motor, no problem. Um, so for all of these lights thrown out on the table, we've got a Club 5 five-way splitter here. So that should make all those connections happen pretty cleanly, or at least most of those. And then we've got another item from Club 5, this uh, two-way cyclical switch. So that basically gives you two switches that you can control together through a three position switch on your transmitter or if you've got a button to cycle through those. So you can turn on one switch, turn that switch off while turning on the other switch, then turn back on the first switch so both of them are on and then turn everything off. So it just lets you cycle through basically, hence cyclical switch. And then what's laid out on the table for LEDs, we've got from Club 5, the tail out housing and the bumper kit. They both came with the same setup, the splitter and the lights. So you can see how bulky their Y splitter is. So we're not gonna use either of those. So that'll save some weight and some space. Then we've got uh, the rock lights for the inner fenders from Club 5. So showed those briefly in uh, stage one, but we'll go ahead and get those installed now. Those are just one continuous string so you can see there's quite a bit right there. And then I've got the stock bumper lights pulled out. We're gonna put those into the headlights. And then I've got from Evan Design some warm white three millimeter LEDs. So we're gonna make those uh, into our bumper lights. So we'll have some warm lights down low and then we'll have the uh, just the cool white kind of LEDs for the headlights. So anyways, that is the game plan. So there's quite a bit to get situated in there Looks like we're gonna have plenty of room to do it, so I am going to get at it. Well, just about as soon as I got into this install, I have changed direction. So, as you see here, I've got a MoFo RC Rockwolf ESC on the table here. So the mail showed up, and I had two of these on order. So of course, since this is the Rockwolf build, this is getting a Rockwolf ESC swapped into it. Of course, these didn't exist when this build was started eight months or so ago but I do have a MoFo motor, so it makes sense to go ahead and pair that up to this MoFo Rockwolf ESC here. So I've gone ahead and programmed this guy with the uh, included program card on the computer with the software. So I've set that to a 4100 KV and uh, it's still a 12 pole motor, so no change there. And I went ahead and set the low voltage cutoff. So we are ready to go with this guy. I've gone ahead and tested it, make sure it, uh, it works fine and uh, it's about the same size as the Lizard, so no difference there as far as really the install. And speaking of the install, made a little bit of progress there. Got the uh, bumper lights transferred over to the headlights, ready for uh, an extension. You can see I got the uh, interior taped in. I had to go ahead and uh, get this little detail in there since the interior is in. It's a little tribute to the designer some Michigan plates here. Let's see if this will zoom in and get a little more detail. There we go. And of course, got the, uh, the matching one on the rear on that uh, license plate mount. So those look really nice. So the final little bits there, and of course the rack, that looks fabulous. So the, uh, the shell is basically done here. Gotta get the rear lights in. So let's look at uh, the chassis so far. So I've gone ahead and started in with what I uh, kind of knew. So I wanted to get this uh, BEC double-sided down on that little skinny angled cross brace there. And you can see I kind of doubled back the wires and zip tied them, take up some of that slack. So I've got my balance plug there, and then I've got it coming back to the ESC there. 
And then I've got the servo slack. You can see they're snaked kind of down low, actually comes back and wraps around, comes back and plugs in. So it basically takes up all of that slack. And then you can see I've got the ESC cable snaked under there. So that's about as far as I've got uh, trying to figure out where that ESC wants to live. I've got some space over here. Of course, I've got this motor wire to contend with and uh, the height. So you can see that uh, motor mount sticks up there and that is coming through the interior. So probably that ESC is probably the tallest we want to get there. Maybe a little bit taller than that. So got to figure out a few more uh, spots for components. I'm going to have a lot of wires for lights coming through. So I'm trying to maybe bring them all over here and leave this open for switches and uh, that splitter block. But anyways, that's the progress thus far. So I'm going to keep kind of experimenting here, see what works and uh, come back with a little more progress. All right, we've got these electronics all buttoned up, got a battery in there. So let's uh, take a look at these lights. So we've got all the headlight, bumper lights, tail lights hooked to, uh, I guess, the channel one switch. So then we've got all of those on on the front. Very nice. And then let's take a look at these tail lights and bumper lights. Oh man, those look really good. Looks so good. Let's see if we get a little illumination out of that side marker. We do, man, that looks awesome. So that worked out just perfectly there. So we've got kind of our, our main lighting. And then with the flick of a switch, those go off. We've got our rock lights. So these guys are kicking. All of our fender wells, nice and lit up there. So with the flick of a switch, the headlights, taillights are back on, so we've got everything cycled on right now. And then one more flick and everything is off. So that is working as it should be. That BEC has got this servo up at 7.4 volts, so super fast. And uh, I guess we have a whole new ESC here to take a look at. So this is the Rock Wolf. So let's give this guy a little bit of a slow crawl. Pretty good creep there. Plenty of speed. And then uh, I've got the servo, of course, readjusted since everything was kind of swapped out. Let's check the binding. So I'm right at my limit. I think I get a little more on my passenger side than driver's side. But both of them, uh, pretty good angles. I'm getting uh, pretty much to the slider. Got a little bit of space there. But at full compression, full twist, I do wanna have some clearance there. So everything is working just fine. So I think that wraps up the electronics there. 
I guess before we fully wrap on the electronics overview, might as well take a look inside here. Don't think I had the battery in there in any of those shots. So it fits in nice and clean, kind of in that stock location. And then uh, this BEC is set up with a 2S balance plug. So that powers the BEC and receiver. And then the normal battery connection hooks up to a little extension to get down here to the Rock Wolf. So that little extension, I think I, you know, was off of a Lizard, a Fury Tech system, just had a spare. So really hard to get to that plug or that switch. So the ESC is always on, which is fine because once you plug in the balance, the receiver is instantly on as well as like the servos. So no need for a switch on this one. Just plug the battery in and everything is powered up. One other thing I had to do on this was uh, get a little more clearance at my fenders. You can see here for the actual LEDs. I was catching those as I was coming down on the headlight back buckets. But uh, other than that, I had to tweak the bottom edge of the fender and notch a little out. And that was, I found I was hitting this drag link on the bottom edge of that fender at full compression. So I just took out a little notch there, but uh, that's something to watch for. I just noticed I could get down a little bit lower on this side than that side. So now I'm sitting even at full shot compression, but uh, drops right on. No conflict up here any longer with those fenders clearance. So everything is looking good and uh, super happy with that layout. It took a little uh, thinking and uh, trial and error, but plenty of space. It just was a lot of routing of wires and getting everything compact but overall i'm very happy with the outcome and i think uh we're pretty much wrapped up although we've got a few more little details Well, that's pretty easy. So as you saw, I got the last few remaining bits of scale detail installed. So let's take a quick look here. Got the stainless diff skids, which I always like to have on my Jeeps. And then I got my other uh, standard little piece for my trail trucks. I got the antenna there at the rear. So we'll see how long this guy holds on, but it looks really good starting out. And then the last little bit that I always like to have whenever possible is a matching spare. And uh, super nice with these WT Micro resin wheels because that spare is like four grams or less. So super lightweight. And then this tire is actually just friction fit in here between the tools. So this is not going anywhere, but it's easily removed. So you can't beat that for a mounting solution. So overall, I think this guy just looks fantastic. And uh, speaking of spares, You'll remember we've got this entire set of spare WT Micro Ray wheels here. This is the dark bronze. So these were on the truck prior here when it was kind of a stock body tan and they looked really good with it. So you know me, I can't have any truck without at least one set of alternates. So I've got some Proline tires here, some more Proline tires. These are the trenchers. So these are about the same size as the Super Swampers. I've actually got one out here. Really nice, sticky compound. Of course, the same compound, I guess, as the Swampers. So I'm gonna get out some more Crawl Innovations foams and uh, stretch these guys out just a little bit wider here for these rays and uh, get them mounted up, see what they look like uh, on kind of the finished product here. I figured before we take a look at the rays mounted up, I would, uh, come back to these tan wheels here, these Arsenal V2s. So earlier I said there's a couple reasons I pulled those off. One of those I couldn't get the tan out of my head once I'd looked at it so long, but the other reason I pulled them off the green Jeep was they were just way too wide with these uh, RC four wheel drive boggers. So I ended up swapping these boggers onto another set of these bronze WT Micro wheels. So these look the same and they basically are, but the rings are actually a polished chrome versus the other style I had on there, which is still here on the spare is more of a machine finished aluminum ring. 
but uh, very hard to tell the difference. I only had four of these, so I kept that original spare wheel on there, but we've got a full bogger tire swap out here, and I think these look much more appropriate at that uh, narrower width. You can see how much wider these guys are, and they just, these guys got stretched and looked kind of funny on it. So I think now this guy has a very uh, appropriate narrow kind of track width, narrow wheels to go with that. And the, uh, I guess the last reason is I just couldn't not have bronze wheels to match with all this matching bronze underneath and the shocks. So ultimately, I think I'm much happier just keeping this basically the original look with two different tire sets on there. So that basically sets up the green Jeep, but it got me thinking about the blue Gladiator. And earlier I said that uh, all of my rigs at least have one set of alternates. Well, that's a lie because the blue Gladiator does not. So I think we're going to take a look at that. So it's got a super wide WT Micro Island style wheel set on it right now. These are polished and they look really killer on it. So I've just got a set of four of these. So I was looking through my other WT Micro wheel stash and I had another nice wide set of four. And these are uh, modeled after a real style wheel and I forget the name, maybe Weld. But they've got a nice serrated uh, rim there, old school fat five star pattern. So I thought these would look really killer on it. And uh, for the tire, I'm gonna keep with that nice uh, island style stretch theme. So I've got a nice looking Super Swamper-esque tire. This is the Enjora uh, Rock Terrain Crawler Tire. But uh, nice compound, great look, um, fairly wide. We're gonna stretch it even wider with some Crawler Innovations foams to fit this rim. But I think that's the next thing. I'm gonna get this alternate set mounted up for this guy and then uh, all the gladiators will have at least one alternate set. Wow, I don't know about you, but I think the fat boy may have just gotten a little bit fatter. So these guys just look incredible. Just super era appropriate for kind of a classic lift up look here. And man, those tires just made up perfectly just to complete the look. Nice and stretched wide, but give it that super island style look there. But man, just couldn't be happier. Sweet looking serrated barrel, just all around. Great look here. So I think that knocks the alternates out of the park for this guy. So now we can finally get back on task, back to the Rock Wolf. Finally, we've got the uh, dark bronze rays on here. And wow, once again, somehow the bronze wheels come along and end up stealing the show. So I don't know why I always have these as alternates because they always just look like they should be the primaries. Got these uh, vented, got some scale hubs on here from RC four wheel drive. But uh, all around, man, these just look fantastic. They feel great. They're basically the exact same size as the Swampers, so same clearances all the way around. So the body's cut to fit already, everything works, and of course we've got the uh, nice looking matching spare here as always. So man, just another great setup here for this Jeep. Don't even want to call it alternate, just uh, kind of a secondary look here. But man, bronze is always just so killer. Just super good looking. And this dark version is no exception. So I think that is gonna uh, set this guy up with uh, all of its alternates. So I think we are done with wheels and tires. All right, I figured it's about that time in the build for a weigh-in. And as you can see here, we're not gonna be able to get a proper weigh-in. So I have a problem with a cord here going to a scale apparently because it won't work in any port. Um, so I threw it on here anyways just to get some sort of uh, a look here at where we ended up. So I'm going to take the front left, which is 142, assume about that much for the front right. So that would be what, another 100, 474, and then uh, 40 to that. So that would be what, 514 um, overall. No real way to get a bias or a cross weight, but you know, a little over 500 and that's without a battery. but. Uh, 
gonna have to reach out to SkyRC and see if I can get a replacement for this uh, scale. Kind of a bummer, but uh, you know it happens. I've had these scales for about, what, three years now, and they have never had a problem. So anyways, we're gonna move on without knowing really where we ended up, but uh, that's how it goes sometimes. Moving right along, I think it is time for a little tabletop test. So let's creep this guy up. Check out some articulation here. Hold the phone. Let's get uh, a little rock light illumination here as we do this. Nice. Stair stepping it up. Man, those rear wheels are just dragging with that underdrive. You can really see it on this plastic. They're just sliding. That's nuts. Alright, we are going to come back at this opposite direction. Get a little different take on it. One more time, just because it was a wider shot. Watch that underdrive in the rear just get dragged. Look at that. That is great. Okay, let's take a quick look at the uh, RTI ramp here. Then get it queued up. There we go. Creep it over the edge. Everything's on the ground, so great articulation with this long wheelbase, especially with the wide axles. Check out that rear clearance with that tire. That's perfect there at the fender. Very nice. Well, here we are, finally, I think, at the end of the build of Rockwolf. So it's been uh, a fun stage here with all the paint and bodywork, and uh, I think it came out just great. I cannot say enough about the rack, the fit and finish. Just a big shout out to uh, Jim at Rockwolf Designs for uh, sending me this thing. Just incredible, inspired this build, and I think it came out great. Just love the paint job, the lights, as well just awesome just overall a great look here and uh the wheels i'm so glad kind of went back to the tan as the primaries and uh, kind of helped spawn the paint job a little bit here but uh really digging this and uh a new gym like gray so i wanted to incorporate that but uh i think it works well with the tan get this uh, backed up here so we can see these tail lights and that spare but uh, hopefully this is rock wolf approved in the end but uh, I definitely approve it I don't know about you and this uh, BAM 4100 looks like it's gonna be uh, plenty of power as well as this uh, old-school servo beast I guess this is Started so long ago, this is the, I guess, Gen 1 Servo Beast that you won't be able to buy anymore. You'll get the much better V2. But uh, with that said, I guess that's going to wrap this guy. So I want to say thanks for coming along on the build. I hope you learned something. Um, I definitely did. Definitely a fun one. Always is when you do a lot of scale detail. Definitely enjoy that. 
But uh, as always, until next time, thanks for watching.